Well, hello and a very warm welcome to a brand new edition of World Panorama with me, Frank Pereira. Let's begin with the headlines. U.S. President Barack Obama on a four-country Asia visit reminds North Korea of U.S. military might suffers setbacks in Japan and the Mideast. There seems to be no end to the Ukraine crisis defying Moscow. Ukraine threatens to blockade pro-Russian militants. Meanwhile, Russia increases military exercises along the Ukraine border. Brazilian Senate approves Internet Bill of Rights. President Dilma Rousseff praises US for relaxing grip on Internet. Ice comes crashing down the same area where 16 Sherpa guides died on Mount Everest one week ago. Fresh avalanches ensure that no one will summit the world's highest mountain during this year's climbing season. First up, US President Barack Obama, who is on a four-country visit to Asia, warned North Korea on Saturday that the United States will not hesitate to use its military might to defend allies. The warning came as Obama sought to showcase US's power in the region amid China's growing influence and Pyongyang's unpredictable nuclear threats. Obama and South Korean President Park yun hai presented a united front against North Korea at a joint news conference following their summit on Friday. They warned that uh, they will respond firmly to any provocations by Pyongyang, which routinely threatens the United States and South Korea with destruction. Obama and Park also urged China, North Korea's main ally, to uh, use its influence to help rein in its uh, unpredictable neighbor. Before visiting Seoul, Obama spent three days in Tokyo where his visit started with imperial pomp. He, however, encountered uh, a setback as he failed to achieve a trade deal that uh, undergrids his strategic pivot to Asia. Obama will also visit Malaysia and Philippines as part of his four-country visit to Asia. Well, let's now introduce uh, our guest on the show. We have with us, of course, Professor Srikant Kondapali. Welcome, Professor. And uh, let's talk about Obama's visit now, of course, to Asia. Much anticipated, much delayed as well. Obama was to visit Asia in October 2013. He has finally done so after a delay of six months. What do you believe is, uh, is the fundamental purpose of the visit? And also, what do you believe are his main challenges? I think President Obama's uh, uh, visit to the four nations uh, in the last one week uh, indicates that he wants to shore up the economy of the United mm -hmm. States, which is flagging. Uh, in the last, uh, in the in the rest of the three years that he has, uh, in terms of the elections and so on for the United States uh, 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 presidentship, I think he wanted to uh, assert that the uh, American economy is going to uh, perform well, and uh, as part of the U.S. rebalancing, which had uh, taken a backseat after the. Uh, Ukrainian incidents. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, I think he's trying to convey to the, a message that the uh, U.S. rebalancing is going to be uh, uh, reasserted, uh, and uh, four main principles were suggested as part of the U.S. rebalancing in Asia Pacific. Number one, in terms of reassuring the allies mm, like mm. Japan, South Korea, and so on, uh, and uh, new allies like uh, the Filipinos who have a maritime agreement with the United States. Uh, Singapore uh, is another where they uh, have a, a very close relationship. Yes. Uh, second, in terms of having a new economic architecture like the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which the Obama administration is pushing through, and nearly 12 countries have accepted the TPP so far. And thirdly, he suffered a setback in Japan, however, uh, because uh, uh, the trade deal did not go through because uh, the president there could not, you know, assure the farmers and others to ensure that this trade deal actually fell through. Well, actually, the Japan and the United States have been fighting on economic issues mm. for the last five decades. Mm. Um, so I think uh, the trade and the tariff-related issues are not uh, nothing new in the U.S.-Japan relations. Mm. Uh, especially in terms of beef and pork, yes, uh, there is a huge debate within uh, Japan about allowing the United States uh, entry into this field. Secondly, in terms of the pharmaceuticals, there is also a concern in Japan yes. about uh, the U.S. entry. Automobile sector mm -hmm. and uh, other areas are identified as part of the uh, trade frictions between Japan and the United States. Uh, but I think the both sides uh, are trying to put up a a highly uh, high-grade uh, trade liberalization pact in terms of the TPP. 
Uh, Prime Minister Abe had announced uh, last week about the second opening of Japan, uh, which basically means that they are trying to strengthening the, uh, strengthen the economic partnership agreements with Australia recently. Yes. They have signed uh, an EPA, which is a kind of uh, entry mark towards the TPP process. So I think the second aspect of the U.S. rebalancing, uh, Obama is trying to strengthen as part of his visit currently. Thirdly, in terms of a cooperative, constructive uh, partnership with China and other countries, mm, mm, mm. Uh, there is also the, uh, uh, since China has roughly about $600 billion of trade with the United States and they have cobbled up last June a uh, new type of major power relationship with the Chinese. So I think this is another aspect of the U.S. rebalancing. Uh, fourthly, in terms of a WMD uh, curbing process, mm. Uh, which is where North Korea comes in, in a yes. more prominent way. Because North Korea had tested nuclear weapons thrice and is poised to test once again. Yes, it's, that's and the latest threat. That is threatened to, uh, to, to test another nuclear missile now for the fourth time, of course. And uh, that, that's something that the U.S. is also watching very keenly. A warning has been sent out now by Obama to North Korea as well. And he has said, beware, do not test these, uh, these nuclear missiles. We are going to come out and support our allies uh, uh, to the hilt. Yes. Uh, in terms of the uh, WMD uh, countering, mm. the U.S. administration had strengthened the the uh, ballistic missile defense system. Uh, with Japan, they have a 10 trillion yen budget for mm. the uh, construction of a Navy-based uh, ballistic missile defense system. And then a series of other measures have been initiated with the allies. Uh, South Korea, you just mentioned about the declaration that they have had with President Park, uh, in which the North Korean issue has been raised substantially, especially again in terms of the conventional and the, um, uh, the ballistic missile programs mm, of mm. Uh, North Korea. This is one of the major fo fo focus areas of President Obama in this. I, I think in this term, Obama is trying to strengthen the U.S. rebalancing in the Asia-Pacific. Yes. So this is a signal that they are reviving. In the first term, he had introduced that, but nothing substantial has happened in mm, terms mm, of rebalancing. Mm. Um, we have also seen the Japanese leadership speaking about the Indo-Pacific uh, or the two lakes as Dr. Manmohan Singh had suggested yes. during his visit to Tokyo last June. So I think there is also an effort to uh, invite India into this sphere. Okay, there is an effort of course to invite India into the sphere but how important is, is, is of course an American engagement in the region of course to ensure that an assertive China is subdued and there is some kind of a balance there. So how important is America's involvement in the region really? I think there is a lot of concern with the uh, uh, China rise mm. and uh, its assertiveness in the South China Sea Islands with the nine dotted lines that they have created. Uh, secondly, in terms of the Senkaku Islands, yes. a dispute between China and Japan. Japan. There has been a series of uh, measures taken by the Chinese Navy mm. and Chinese Air Force in terms of the air defense identification zone, which was imposed in the East China Sea areas by China last October. Mm. And I, I think all these are leading to a lot of tension between China and Japan, China and the Southeast Asian countries on the South China Sea dispute. Also, there has be also been a Chinese entry into the Pacific Ocean mm. with the naval activities and yes. so on and so forth. So overall, there has been a concern about China rise and the unpredictability of uh, viewing China in terms of this Asia-Pacific security. So there is the U.S. concern there as well as the its allies like Japan, South Korea and the Southeast Asian countries. Indeed. Let's not forget that, uh, of course, these four countries that Obama has already visited two and two more to go, of course. Now, three of these countries have gone through some kind of a significant episode in the last six months. You have uh, the Philippines, of course, which has gone through a massive typhoon with Haiyan, of course. It's still rebuilding. Rebuilding uh, is still going on there in the Philippines. Then you have Malaysia, the Malaysian Airlines tragedy, and then South Korea as well, the ferry tragedy. So this particular visit comes at a time when most of these countries have gone through some kind of a significant calamity. Exactly. The Chinese role in Scarborough Shoal about two years ago had rattled the Filipinos and the Filipinos immediately concluded a maritime agreement with the United States. 
Of course, the United States transfers to Philippine, Philippines is not really very high. Mm. Uh, it included just about $200 million of uh, uh, fast attack craft and other uh, naval vessels. But these are not substantial uh, allocations to the Filipino Navy. Yet, I think there is a uh, note taken by the U.S. administration that the Chinese assertiveness in South China Sea is a concern. Uh, again, in terms of the MH370, mm. uh, it is clear that the Chinese initial efforts in terms of satellite imageries and its Navy's efforts to track down the MH370, they did not really uh, fructify in terms of identifying the debris. Yet, I think uh, there is an effort made in terms of the counter piracy operations mm. Mm. by uh, various uh, navies in the region, Malaysia, Indonesia, and and uh, Singapore included yes. on this count. And there is the, as you mentioned, uh, South Korea is a major area of the uh, U.S. attention because uh, about three years ago, the U.S. and South Korea naval exercises were opposed by the uh, Chinese. Yes. Uh, General Ma Xiaotian, who is currently the Air Force commander of uh, China, had opposed the U.S.-South Korea naval exercises. So, which indicated to the South Koreans and to the Americans that there is a certain uh, Chinese restriction in the Yellow Sea mm. uh, and they are uh, practicing the area denial, uh, anti-access area denial strategy of uh, blocking the United States Navy into this region. So, this has really raised the eyebrows in the United States as well as to its allies in East Asia. Indeed, of course, uh, Obama is not visiting China, but uh, somehow China seems to be the, the focal point of everything that's happening here. China is also keeping a very close eye or close watch on what Obama is saying. So even though he's not visiting China or going to meet the Chinese Premier, a lot of attention there on China as well. I think his November 2009 visit to Beijing uh, and subsequently at the Copenhagen summit of the mm. uh, climate change proposals, I think Obama, President Obama decided to uh, be firm on China uh, from then onwards. Uh, in November 2009, he declared a G2 process with China, but the Chinese did not take up that bait yes. uh, in that moment. Um, subsequently, in the climate change proposals, uh, He Yafei, the vice foreign minister, of uh, China uh, had uh, a body language which indicated to Obama that this is uh, this cannot be taken by mm -hmm. the Americans. Mm -hmm. uh, he was pointing fingers at uh, President Obama during that meeting in Copenhagen. Uh, from then on, the uh, U.S. Uh, observers keep saying that the that the U.S. president had taken a position which is to be very firm on China, despite the cooperative, constructive partnership that they are concluding with China. So I think from then on, he had taken a position where he would stand up to mm. the Chinese pressures. All right. Uh, Professor Konopali, thank you so much for joining us uh, in our studio, of course. Uh, we'll have to leave it at that. Uh, we'll move on now, of course, to some more news that is coming through. Russian forces launched uh, army drills near the border late on Thursday, prompting the Ukrainian Prime Minister to accuse Moscow of trying to instigate Third World War. The crisis worsened as Ukrainian forces uh, killed up to five pro-Moscow rebels when they closed in on the separatist military stronghold in the east. The US, on the other hand, threatened Russia with tougher sanctions as the crisis showed no signs of easing. Here's a report. The Ukrainian Prime Minister is seeing war clouds looming over his country. Yatsnyuk accused Russia of occupying Ukraine militarily as well as politically. Russia hit back, reiterating that Kyiv will have to pay for the bloody crimes in the country. В условиях острого кризиса государства украинская оборонная промышленность практически лишена государственной поддержки. Две трети ее предприятий смежников находятся в нашей стране, в России. Pro-Russian militants exchanged fire with Ukrainian government forces in eastern city of Donetsk on Thursday. They also blocked roads in Slovyansk. Later, they exchanged fire with government forces. However, no one was injured. 
According to the Ukrainian Interior Ministry statement, five separatist militants were killed and a military police officer was injured in counter-terror actions at three checkpoints set up by Russian militia. The head of the Ukraine's anti-terror center also accused the separatists of using civilians as human shields. A Ukrainian military helicopter was hit by rocket fire and exploded at an airfield near Slovians. После успешных кроков украинских силовых структур по борьбе с терроризмом Российская Федерация перешла от публичных погроз на нашу адресу. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry accused Russia of destruction, deception and destabilization in eastern Ukraine. The U.S. also threatened to impose tougher sanctions on Russia. Seven days, two opposite responses and one truth that cannot be ignored. The world will remain united for Ukraine. So I will say it again. The window to change course is closing. President Putin and Russia face a choice. Repercussions of a war-like situation are already being felt in East Ukraine. Schools in Slovian stay open, but only a few students attend classes as parents choose to keep children at home fearing an assault by Ukrainian troops. Moscow has stationed tens of thousands of troops along the border even as separatists occupy key buildings in a dozen eastern Ukrainian towns. Well, Brazil's president signed into law a Bill of Rights for the Digital Age that aims to protect online privacy and promote the Internet as a public utility. This is being done by barring telecommunication companies from charging for preferential access to their networks. Here's a report. Brazil's President Dilma Rousseff advocated for the transparent and multilateral governance of the Internet at International Forum in Sao Paulo on Wednesday. The two-day Net Mundial conference in Sao Paulo, which opened Wednesday, discussed cybersecurity and how to safeguard privacy and freedom of expression on the Internet, as well as the shape of a future international body to oversee the decentralized digital network. Presidente, que o Brasil defende que a governança da internet seja multissetorial, multilateral, democrática e transparente. Nós consideramos o modelo multissetorial a melhor forma de exercício da governança da internet. Rousseff organized the two-day global conference on the future of the internet in the wake of US spying revelations. She was infuriated after discovering last year that the US National Security Agency snooped on her personal emails and telephone calls with secret internet surveillance programs. Other leaders, including Germany's Angela Merkel, were also targeted by the NSA surveillance. Brazil's president said that although the transition over to an international multi-sector governance may be complex, the process should not be delayed. É necessário e inadiável dotar de um caráter global as organizações que hoje são responsáveis pelas funções centrais da internet. A complexidade dessa transição, que envolve competência jurisdicional, prestação de contas e pactuação com múltiplos atores, não diminui seu sentido de urgência. The electronic spying revelations made public by former NSA analyst Edward Snowden brought worldwide calls for the United States to reduce its control of the Internet, created 50 years ago to link the computers of American universities to the US defense industry. Bowing to the demands of Brazil and other nations following the uproar, the United States agreed to relinquish oversight of the Internet Corporation. Well, we'll slip into a short break now, but on the other side, we'll take a look at how the fresh avalanches in Nepal will affect the country. Welcome back. Well, fresh ice avalanches on Mount Everest have made it almost certain that uh, no one will summit the world's highest mountain from Nepal during this year's climbing season. The ice did not injure anyone, but it came crashing through the same area where 16 Sherpa guides died one week ago in an avalanche, the single deadliest day ever known on Everest. Let's now take a look at how the country is grappling with the situation and what kind of an impact it is going to have on Nepal. Dozens of Sherpa guides left the Everest base camp on Wednesday after the deaths of their colleagues exposed an undercurrent of resentment by Sherpas over their pay, treatment and benefits. 
I would say about one third of the Sherpa are, yeah. are not at base camp, want to climb. And of the two thirds that are there, there's quite a lot of influence. And so, you know, these guys are signing papers, but I'm not sure they know why they're signing the paper. Yeah. Are they signing the paper to agree with um, the, the demands that we sent to the ministry? Or are they signing the paper to stop climbing? Mm. I'm not, I saw many people signing and then they go back to their camp and they, they're actually not sure what they signed for. Three Sherpa guides remain buried in ice and snow after last Friday's deadly avalanche. 13 bodies have been recovered so far. This is the first time. Uh, 2014 यो since the accident, the Nepalese government has been in a dispute with the Sherpas who have threatened to boycott the rest of the season. They want better pay for their risky work. The government has apparently met at least some of their demands. Most attempts to reach the summit are made in mid-May when weather is the most favourable. Thousands of Nepali guides and porters make their livelihoods during the climbing season when climbers rely on them for everything from carrying gear and cooking food to high-altitude guiding. Without them, reaching the summit would be almost impossible. <laughs> Cancelling the expeditions will have a ripple effect on the incomes and livelihoods of hundreds of Sherpas, mostly part of a small ethnic group renowned for mountaineering skills who assist foreign climbers. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. Let's now get you a roundup of the other world news in our special segment, Globe Watch. Colombian novelist Gabriel Garcia Marquez had left behind an unpublished manuscript that he chose not to print while he was alive. It has been revealed. Cristobal Pera, editorial director of Penguin Random House Mexico, said that Garcia Marquez's uh, family has not yet decided if the book should be released posthumously or which publishing house would get the rights. Garcia Marquez died at his Mexico City home on April 17th at 87 after a long battle with cancer. The manuscript has a working title of We'll See Each Other in August. The Pakistan Army has demanded the Nawaz government to close down the country's top-rated TV channel after it aired accusations that the military's top intelligence agency was behind the shooting of its senior journalist. The demand comes after remarks made by relatives of journalist Hamid Mir, who was shot six times in the southern city of Karachi on Saturday, were broadcast by Geo News. The relatives said that the ISI carried out the attack on Mir for his reports on the spy agency's role in the country's politics. The military which oversees the ISI has denied the charge. China, the United States, Japan and other Asia-Pacific countries have signed a maritime agreement to ease maritime tensions. The agreement would help reduce the chances of miscommunication or the potential for situations to arise that could lead to conflict in busy sea lanes. The Code for Unplanned Encounters at Sea was passed at the Western Pacific Naval Symposium, a biennial meeting that opened in Qingdao, Shandong Province, China. The South Korean Coast Guard said that volunteer divers are causing problems in search operations for missing ferry passengers. 
An official said that there were guidelines connected to the sunken ferry which divers used to enter the water. But some of the volunteer divers uh, were seen around the site taking souvenir photographs and getting in the way of the Navy and Coast Guard divers. The confirmed death toll on Friday was 159 with many of those found at the back of the ship on the fourth deck. The Sibol sank on April 16th on a routine trip from the port of Incheon near Seoul to the southern holiday island of Jeju. A massive sandstorm blanketed northwestern China on Wednesday, turning the middle of the day into night and reducing visibility to near zero in some areas. State television carried surveillance videos showing a building being engulfed in a yellowish hue before plunging into darkness in a matter of minutes in Gansu province. Visibility in the area dropped to 20 meters. The temperatures fell as low as zero in some parts of Gansu. The severe storm wreaked havoc knocking down power lines, pushing over billboards and causing over 100 fires in neighbouring Xinjiang province. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of World Panorama. I'll see you again, same time, same place next week. Until then, keep watching Rajasabha Television.